All right. Let's see here. And stream. All right. Hope, hopefully we're just starting now. Um, okay. So bit of bad news. Unfortunately, I didn't copy over the autosave from the Iron Man game last time. And uh, because of that, I played a different Iron Man game and it deleted the the last uh, playthrough so today is going to be a bit of a uh, post game analysis uh, synopsis you know uh and we're going to go over a few things that i didn't talk about that i wanted to talk about this time and i'm going to give you guys a, a few trips uh, uh tips and things like that so uh yeah so unfortunately i it was meant to be a tutorial so you know, I shouldn't have been too excited about it, but at the end of the last game, I, I it kind of did become like a little bit of a playthrough for me, and I was getting very excited about the the prospect of hunting down the Allied Navy. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do that. <laughs> um, I am happy though that we didn't stop uh, a little bit earlier. I did push push that last like fifteen minutes to get that last naval battle. Um, so yeah, um, I'm gonna pull up the 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 VOD. So this is from last time. So if I go up here, hopefully here, right after this. So this is kind of where we left off. This was like the last little bit here. So I'm hoping you guys can hear this. It's a little bit quiet. Let's see. What would I want to fight? I want to fight something. Here we go. Yes, come on, get this. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about this right here because we were kind of rushing it. Like, this is a huge mess, right? So there are some things you can see on the side here. Um, we're, we don't have air supremacy in Yunnan, right? That's kind of a big deal. Um, obviously, we're getting raided in some spots here. Uh, it looks like there's a, a bit of a, uh, an invasion going on. And we're also, the big issue here is fuel. Um, you know, and I've got a million things that I could have uh, stopped and gone through. But we are going to do this uh, naval battle here. So, um, okay, with 19 days left, All right, big fleet, big fleet. they get into the battle. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I'll let it play out. Big fleet, All right, we're, we're going to end with this, but yeah, so we've got more carriers in the battle this time. Uh, and let's see what happens. Yeah, a few more ships this time, eh? So we did lose positioning, um, which it does, it does scale our stats a little bit. And we did lose screens, but we sunk so much here. <laughs> Yeah, so by the by the time, if you kind of notice there, I actually do want to talk about that. So as a battle goes on, okay. as a battle goes on, here, let me just go back, uh, see if I can go back five seconds. As a battle goes on, you will lose screening pretty much always. Um, just because like your 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 ships will start to disengage, you'll also use lose positioning. Like that just kind of happens naturally throughout the battle. So like sometimes to torpedoes can come in at the very end and do a lot of damage. Yeah, we, we surprisingly survived that. It was seven days left of fuel. This time, eh? Yeah. <laughs> kind of got lucky. I'm not going to lie. We got lucky. We got a little bit lucky. Um, <laughs> okay. So this is sort of what we wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. So my, my plan would have been, uh, had we continued this playthrough, we would have just done this about five to ten times between, like, the UK Navy and the US Navy to the point where they would have had, like, sub-50 ships. And then we would have had complete naval dominance. And yeah, um, we did conquer uh, a few bit. We took out their their oil, um, not their oil, their, their rubber, sort of doing what the the, the allies needed to do, uh, or the Japan needed to do to the allies. Um, but like that that was kind of like what you would do sort of in a, in a multiplayer game. Now, um, if you were playing a a playthrough and you wanted to end the war as quick as possible there were some comments earlier or like uh someone pointed out that obviously you just want to go for the majors right so we could have gotten docking rights with uh you know G germany essentially right so let, let's just hear i'm just gonna start the war really quickly and i just want to i just want to talk about this so so we're at war with the uk right let's go forward day so that all the join all right so uk is bringing in the, their allies so they got they got some some allies now now we're at war with uk and we're a major so you see how there's this gold border here we have this gold border 
and so does the UK. So they're both like both of us are majors. If the all the majors in a faction are capitulated, have been capitulated, you'll get a peace deal. Even if you don't have Australia or Canada or New Zealand, you'll you'll get a peace deal. So when we were kind of going and grabbing all these little islands here, looking for the navy, like this wasn't like the most optimal single player strat. The most optimal thing that we could have done was get access rights, docking rights, and then even military access with Germany, and then invaded the UK. And we could have gone to war earlier with Germany before the US got involved with the war. And we could have essentially taken all of this. So th that would have been the way to go if you wanted to do um, a, qu a very quick war. Now, um, another thing you can do is there are other countries in the world that are um, that match your ideology, right? So as Japan, we are, you know, the brown faction, right? Um, but you can see here there's Dominican Republic, there's El Salvador, uh, obviously our puppets, but Peru and Venezuela. So if you ever need to get to the U.S., this is kind of one thing I wanted to show you guys. So I was actually going to uh, completely skip uh, Hawaii. And we were going to do uh, a full naval invasion across here. This was the, the original plan. And to do that, I was going to get docking rights with El Salvador. By getting docking rights with El Salvador, I should actually, here. Um, here, I'm going to... Actually, I don't have them right now. So I can show you my... See the range? See the range is limited? I can't really get past here. Now watch this. Okay. Boom. So now I can I have all of this area here. And all I need to do is just get these last few seaboards. And you can kind of do that with um, like essentially this. Let's see if I can get over. Yeah, so I might actually need a different, um, a bigger range one. But I think we would have had range with the Yamamoto's. Yeah, so like our smaller ships have a lower range, but we can essentially get over here. Um, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. yeah, let's see if I can just spawn one in. Here, I'm gonna double check these size. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so our max range would have been 4,500. So we would have had 50% more than what we have here. So we would have had these two tiles, essentially. So we could have invaded the US, essentially, like, uh, without um, taking Hawaii. We may have needed this one. We may have needed the um, uh, Midway, but uh, you can actually bypass Hawaii. I've done it before in the past. Um, yeah, so that's one thing I wanted to talk about. What was the point uh, to do uh, with you had one battleship? Yeah, so if we knock out the US Navy, they're not going to have supremacy. They're not going to have supremacy. So we can actually invade past that. The reason why we got Rob 1 over the, the fleet. So this task force, it has a, a range that's average. Um, I can't actually get the stats, can I? But like if you look here and then if I just pull this one out here. See how this changes? So you, it's it's barely changing, but see that this is the full task force, but because we have these light cruisers, it's actually bringing down the average uh, range. And then when you have battleships, the battleships have longer range than that. You can actually get really long range with um, uh, uh, the subs. So subs four have 6,000 range, and our subs threes will have 5,000 range. So we could have also done subs, because uh, we did have sub threes at the time. So yeah. We can get supremacy over here and with El Salvador, you can get like this side, this side's the harder side to get. Cause it's obviously coming from all the way from Japan, you know, you come here, but if you're here, this is closer. So uh, obviously the starting Navy doesn't have super great range, but we could have gotten that, uh, later. Um, and then that's, the, it's also the same case with, um, if you're Germany or Italy, um, if, and you're playing on historical, um, uh, Dominican Republicans is a good example. So with like, if you, even if you took a Gibraltar as Italy, you come out, but the problem is you still have to come from like, this is your closest port, right? So if your range is only here to the mid Atlantic, that's not super great, but if you can get docking rights here you can get to the mid Atlantic and then this side is covered. So you can actually invade all the way across into the U S um, very easily instead of like Island hopping up and around, 
you can come just literally straight across it. And once you have dominance, like you can co you can convoy escort all your troops and you don't have to worry about them uh, going across. So yeah, that was one thing I wanted to talk about. And if you're playing on a historical, just uh, come into this diplomacy window when you open the country list and then just search by the whatever faction you are or not faction um, ideology you are. And, you know, for the most care, uh, uh, most part, like the these three here, the, they usually will give you um, documents. So if you're a Democratic, you'll get it from Democrats, Communist, uh, and then, you know, the brown one. Um, sometimes non-aligned doesn't work because they, they, there's the weird things. There's like weird modifiers. Um, uh, Portugal is a really good one to get, but sometimes they won't give it to you, uh, even if you are non-aligned. Um, so, and then, you know, sometimes like there are countries that want to stay neutral for whatever reason, but yeah. So that's one thing to do for, in terms of naval range, if you want to do really far invasions, especially like going from the old world to the new world, generally you need that, you need the, the docking rights. So that's one thing I didn't talk about. Um, so I wanted to talk about there. We've also got, um, right, the, I made a big mistake in the last video and um, I, I, I did talk about it. It would have, had this been like a multiplayer game or something, it would have killed me. So what I actually had was, I had um, uh, automatic split off on, on my main fleet. Yeah. Yeah, Paraguay is another good one. Exactly. Uh, which, which DLCs do you recommend other than though, uh, No Step Back, Death or Dishonor, Arms Against Tyranny, Awaken the Tiger? Yeah. So um, to in order to get the Navy stuff, you need Man the Guns. Uh, that's a good one. A, the uh, By Blood alone gives you all the air modifiers. So if you come here and look at this, my air tree might look different than your than the vanilla. I mean, it does, obviously. Um, so like you actually get the air designer in the same way that you get the tank designer. So By Blood alone is good. Essentially, like they're, they're all good for what they, they do, you know? They all have, like there isn't one that's like, um, that doesn't really expand the game. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're looking to save some money and, and maybe you're not sure you're going to be completely into Hoi just yet, um, check out the, the subscription service, which I think is going up to $7 a month. Um, Paraguay is landlocked. No, Peru. Uh, yeah. Paraguay is landlocked. Um, Peru would be one, uh, Chile would be another Ecuador, but sometimes you're right. These, these countries do go communist in, um, yeah, so they, they don't actually do it in, in, in historical. Bolivia does, uh, goes communist in, or sorry, Par Paraguay goes, is communist in historical, but, um, yeah. Yeah, as a communist nation, it, it is a little bit harder to get across if you're playing on historical. Um, the thing you might want to do is, that, like, let's say you're the Soviets and you want to go across the Atlantic this way. Win in Spain. Win in Spain and then maybe try to hop to Bermuda. That might be the way to go. Or just fight the Allies. I mean, you if you're fighting the Allies anyways, take the UK, go up this way, go Iceland, Denmark, come across. Or if you can get if you do early war against the UK, annex annex um Newfoundland. And I like to also an annex this one here, St. Pierre and uh Miquelon or whatever it is. Uh because you can build airports and radar here, and then when you do do the you, the war, it's easy to come across or or get Canada, right? So if you have if you have Canada and you fight the U.S. early, easy peasy lemon squeezy, um, yeah, yeah. Paraguay's not gonna help you with naval invasions unless they get like outside. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Yeah, I was talking about this automatic split off. Um. Yeah. So for your main, like, this is fine for your your convoy escorts and your 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 subs that are raiding completely fine to have this um, on but for your main fleet you want to disable this so you have it disabled I, I don't know why but I guess I had it on on my main fleet because when I left that battle the everything's broke off and you know I had a couple come up here I had one to go like to um, like Hong Kong and I had one come to uh, this uh, on that island there and then I had another uh, task force part of the task force go to Singapore so my main fleet completely broke up and it does repair quicker because when you when you put up your queue here, I can go up to 14 here. You can put all your dockyards to whatever, but like let's say you had 40 dockyards on it, you can only repair as big as the port is. Or uh, so, like let's say here, I can only repair a six on here, and then like this one here is going to be another 
this is 10. So I could do 16 between these, but I have to, I have to split up. So six, six would go on Hong Kong and 10 would go here. And if you want to do more, um, if you want to do it more then yeah. Uh, sorry, I just got to turn this off. Yeah. If you want to do more, you, you need to split up the fleet, which, which the game kind of does for you, but you don't want that. Um, you don't always want that. Cause if your, if your fleet gets caught off and it's like, a <laughs> uh, pair drop from Paraguay. There you go. <laughs> How's it going, bud? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my point is if, if you get caught off off guard with like a quarter of your main fleet, it, it's very bad. Um, cause you can get sunk. You can get sunk with like, you know, you like you have a couple carriers move out and they're not screened and then they get just at attacked by themselves. It, you know, that is very bad news bears. Um, so yeah, I, I would recommend kind of doing that manually uh, and then trying to move to the bigger ports. When you are repairing, if you're if you find it's taking forever and it's like, oh, only one ship is repairing at a time, it's probably because your 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 fleet's stationed on, on a, a port that's not very big. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> like uh, in the game, I'm I'm just gonna answer in the game. I guess in real life I don't like any of them, but in the game, this 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 faction here is a good um uh warlord to play the guangxi click um you know i th I, th I think there's a a video about this guy on sam and Ella's channel um uh, i might be <laughs> mixing up maybe it's this guy no it's not that guy um but yeah this 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 one here is a fun faction to play uh if you're not going to play the nationalists or the communist um in terms of the warlord i mean i don't like any of the warlords right they're they're the big jerks um uh, <laughs> okay all right, so that's uh, we we talked about docking rights. We talked about uh, automatic split off. Uh, yeah, they do have the yeah they have all the resources. So um, when you're annexing when you're annexing land in China, grab this stuff here. Yeah, it's very good to have these guys at the um, yeah and to start with yeah because it's like if you look it's like you, China gets some iron and some tungsten which is good enough. Communist China has a little bit, um, but yeah Yunnan nothing. This is a struggle. Unless you're, you, you got to actually take into these, um, do the, the border conflicts and then, yeah, the, <laughs> it's much harder. It's <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Man, the guns or buy blood alone. I can't decide designer is better. Yeah. It's going to depend. Do you, do you prefer, prefer the air stuff? I, I would say like, here's the thing in Hoi 4, Navy is fun, but it doesn't matter so much. You can kind of cheese it against the AI, whereas the air designer, that's always going to be powerful in every playthrough. So like, unless you're Japan or the UK or the US, um, Navy kind of doesn't matter that much. Like, you know, hot take guys, but uh, as much as I enjoy it, it doesn't matter. So, I mean, if I were to pick, if I had to like, I could only have one, I would probably pick by blood alone. Yeah. Uh, GB San Ma, uh, you don't like Ma Bung? Yeah, I yeah I'm not too sure. I just uh, I don't know. It's been a while since I played some of the other warlords. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was um, potentially breaking non-aggression packs. So I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna get a. Um, here, let's get a, a non-aggression pack with the Soviets. So one thing that we could have done as well is we could have invaded the Soviet Union. Like as an alternative. Now, because we were Japan, I believe at some point we got a, a non-aggression pact. So if I want to cancel this non-aggression pact, uh, so let's turn off yes man. All right. So yeah. So we cannot break the non-aggression pact for the first 16 months, essentially. We need 200% um, on, on, on their border. Between a, a year and a half and two years, we need uh, as much as they do. And then after two years, we just need half as their divisions. Now, if if we take uh, all of our divisions here and we stack it. Now, this isn't going to be great for supply, but like, let's just ignore supply for a second. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get up here. I don't know why it's letting me do this. Oh, hold on. I think it's because I think it's because I just have, I have some console commands on. There we go. Okay. So I, I can't I can't break it all, at all for the first twelve months, but after twelve months I can break it. So it's you see how here is thirteens. Um, 
I, w- I was just going to see, like, I was going to show you guys that, like, if you get enough divisions on the border, you can actually just break it. Um, so, yeah, that's the whole point there. I-, I wanted to show you, like, that was actually what part of my plan was to investigate, like, part of this playthrough. It was maybe invade the Soviets as well and help out um, uh, Germany. And I was going to show you guys how to upgrade supply and to get to here. And, like, because this, this, this whole part of the, the, the map, like this here, it's rough for supply. I, I should say, like, maybe that. <laughs> this is better <laughs> square. This is, it's just so rough for supply. So, um, you know, you want to upgrade your rail lines, but you will also have to build supply depots uh, because up here, there's just nothing. Like, you have this, but then that's not the border, right? This is the border. Um, and so you want to get just far enough that you can actually link up and get into this side. And then once you get to the Urals, you know, a, a big part of this would actually be to get the Soviet divisions to come onto you or like to, to target you. Um, and then Germany would have a much easier time. Uh, it does go by divisions. Yeah. So, uh, I actually haven't tested it. You probably could cheese it with two wits. Um, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I might have to go forward a year. Uh, yeah, let's see. Here. I'm just I'm just going to see if we can make some uh some two it's like honey duck suggests. Uh but yeah, while we're talking about this, um Yeah, you just need you need to upgrade the supply on essentially everything, right? So uh and then, you know, the, the Soviets would collapse. And then having the Soviets gone, even if you're at war with the Allies, it would just make things so much easier. So, again, I don't know if that's something you'd want to do or not. But, uh, yeah. Uh, another thing, uh, I think I was a little bit misunderstood um, wrong about carrier overstacking. Uh, I thought for some reason you could always have... Uh, <laughs> I'm probably getting invaded here, aren't I? You know, let's turn off AI just in case. <laughs> Uh, with carry over stacking, I think I was wrong about having having the ability to have five. I need to investigate that because um, I did notice that we still had the penalty, so there might I might need to do a little bit of trading uh, training in the future. So, training, researching, investigating. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the point is, uh, in terms of like the carrier stuff, I'm going to need to. Uh, there might be a video out. That, that's what I'm, I'm kind of saying here. Um, yeah, so I, I wasn't 100% sure about the overstacking, and I meant to do a little bit of investigating before this stream, but I didn't actually do that. So, um, yeah. All right. Um, and then I think the last thing I had for you guys before this is I, we're going to go over the, the Admiral traits, and then I'll come back and I'll, we'll test whether or not the it's the division thing. So in terms of your admirals, so you have uh, quite a few here. So we got Yamamoto, right? Um, and so just like the the general traits, you have uh, admiral traits, right? So you have uh, your sea sea wolf, leap protector, fly swatter, superior tactician, blockade runner, spotter, air controller, Ironside, and with everything like this, you want to do. Um, you, you want to make builds that complement each other. So if you have an admiral that's like your 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 raiding admiral, you want to obviously get Sea Wolf, right? And you you want to do um, things that will help out your subs. But if you have like a uh, an aircraft carrier build, you want to have like stuff that benefits the planes. Yeah. Um, just before I get a little bit too further, you always thought it was four per max, correct? But there was a way to get five, and I was I was a little bit confused about that. Yeah, final two questions for today was law resistance is it worth it? I really like law resistance. Yeah, uh, spies do get uh, captured quite frequently. Uh, we'll come back to this thing so that we get a, a clean clip. Um, I'll show you how I'll show you how to um, make it so that they don't get captured that often. So it does suck. The Soviets have a really high capture chance if they they're on historical because they they have an advisor. Um, we can't see them, but they have an advisor because uh, on um, that gives them uh, capture rate. But it, there are there are a couple of upgrades that you can do to to lower that. So obviously having a, a national of of that country 
is very good. So if you get local training and you recruit a national that is uh, in that country, so if you want to spy in Germany, getting a German spy is good. Uh, so this is one way to, to make it so that you don't get captured as often. The This also uh, does affect your off uh, your capture chance so on a really low level like with only passive one this makes it basically zero so you want to grab this one here uh and also if they do get captured they just insta you know uh I, ca I can't say that word on youtube but you know and then this is actually a good one in terms of like capturing from the the enemy so when you do capture their spies you get so much more intelligence out of it if they do get captured there is a mission that you can kind of re uh, f uh you can kind of rescue them, right? So I literally think it's like rescue captured operative. Um, and just, if you see that, just go do that right away. You know, stop, don't pass go kind of deal. Uh, and then, yeah, the, there is so much in terms of intelligence that, that helps you. It's not just a matter of looking at the Intel, like sure. You get to see, like if you had high Intel on the Soviets, you get to see all their stuff, right? You get to see all the designs, their air, when you're playing in multiplayer, this obviously matters a lot because you need to know what kind of build they're doing. So like if there's like, you know, like a light tank Soviets, right? That you don't need to invest so much in TD as Germany. You know, like th that kind of information is very important. But it also gives you stats. It gives you stats in army battle, navy battle, air battle. It gives you stats. Like uh, in army, up to 15%. You can have up to 15% stats against an enemy if you have enough air. Um or not air intel so uh it's quite it's quite good if you don't have this if you don't have lab resistance it's literally um a tech here so on under the the computing sides there's decryption and encryption and just make sure you're, you're keeping up to date with that and that's kind of it for intelligence there isn't a whole lot uh you get intel from battles still and, and and things like that but um there's not a whole lot you can do but intel is quite good yeah national seducer is a good trait to do grab too so uh, when I grabbed, I grabbed a code um, breaker here, but uh, can I do uh, agency instant here? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna instant. Uh, here, I'm gonna auto complete. Let's see if I can just grab one real quick. And then uh, I just want to see if I we have any. Um, I. To grab yeah so here we go uh so here yeah so seducer is a good so uh, own operative detection chance um here's another good like having the national uh so you get uh own op uh, operative detection chance negative 10. so if you get a, na uh, a national that's also a seducer and then you get um these you, like it's pretty hard to catch them um i mean i'm not saying that it doesn't happen but it, it you know it, it intel intel's worth it yeah uh Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, spies are good. Some nations get bonuses. Exactly. Yeah. USSR is the one that you got to worry about um, pretty much. And it's only when they're on historical. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we were, we were going to break this. So we still need 200%. We need 200% currently. Uh, I didn't actually deploy a whole lot of units. So let's do instant training. I'm just going to Don't have enough man. What? Maybe we do. There we go. Two billion. And I know we have equipment. Yeah. Oh, here we go. It's just been training them. Uh, okay. <laughs> Whoops. All right. So. <laughs> I'm like, where are they going? <laughs> like, I'm not even seeing them, like, load up. Okay. Uh, let's switch these to the two width. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to take to the Soviets. I just want to see how many, how many um, divisions they have on this. So they currently have 25. So they have 25 on the border. So if I send um, 52 widths as Japan... I should be near that. Or let, let's do 55. Yeah. I'll come back to the, or 57 is good. So uh, this is only a two width, right? Make sure we got the right one. 
Okay, yeah, they're, they're they're essentially tiny. So we just go like this. Make sure they're on that. And then they're gonna go here. Uh, MP is just lobby camping. And then three speed, yeah. <laughs> MP games are kind of long for what they are. Um, yeah, so I can cancel the non-aggression pact, even though it's only two wits. So you can kind of cheese this a little bit. Even though the Soviets clearly have um, more divisions on the, on the the border, you can kind of cheese it. So that that's, you know, <laughs> we've got negative <laughs> 2 million manpower now. Um, yeah, so these are, because they're two wit, they're, they've only got 10,000 manpower in them. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess it must just be like really difficult for them to calculate or must be not an easy way to do it. So, um, yeah, we can cancel this snow aggression pact. And then now, um, yeah, we can just, just justify a war goal and look, we can clear on them in 10 days. Um, okay. So um, last thing we're going to cover is Admiral traits. I'll, I'll just come back to that. Uh, any more questions before I get too distracted? Just wait a second here. But uh, yeah, yeah, this <laughs> 2 billion. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So we had Yamamoto. This one here. All right. So yeah. So what, what I was saying is like you, you want to have, um, you want to have builds that complement each other. So if you have, if you're doing raiding, you want them to be uh, helping raider. If you're doing convoy escort, you want like your fleet protector. Um, if you have a large surface fleet, you want to have um, essentially like your superior tactician. We'll go over what the, all these things mean or like Ironside for better stats. Um, for the most part, you don't really need the minor, minor stuff. Um, but yeah, okay, so with uh, Sea Wolf, you get uh, Submarine Attack plus 20%, that's great. Uh, reveal Chance and Extreme Penetration, these ones. Between these two, uh, I like Reveal Chance, but if you uh, if you find that they're escorting their, their, their convoys, this one's better. So this one would be better more for MP, and this one's better for um, uh, da, 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 single player. Uh, and then between these two, this is the best one. So this one here, actually, uh, because the, the cooldown factor it basically lets you fire an extra uh volley per per round and it it doesn't actually it's not actually 20 25 percent um it's it, it's sitting between i think sending three three torpedoes and four um every time that they they get a round um i don't actually have the numbers straight in front of me so no quotes but uh this is very good this is more than like um 25 stats so you'd kind of want to come down here and get these these aren't actually exclusive so you could actually grab that and then um, you'd need this as well for that, but, um, yeah. Uh, in terms of fleet protector, you want screening efficiency. This is very good when, um, I, you seen last time where I was kind of struggling in the last game cause I wanted to get all, all these zones, but way past Africa and I didn't have the screening efficiency. So, uh, I was sort of hitting a cap. Having a fleet protector would give me an extra 20% on that. Uh, visibility damage, uh, this is good. So if you're doing, um, uh, damage like uh, sub hunting this would be good here as well and then uh you, that wouldn't matter if on on a protector uh just hectories together for victory L they're all kind of worth it get them on sale <laughs> get get them on sale um blast water so it's probably gonna not really matter that much in in single player because they don't really build a whole lot of air to to fight your 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 fleets the the ai doesn't this is obviously a good one if you're trying to counter uh, a carrier build from a multiplayer that would be something to grab uh but uh, obviously damage and speed um and in terms of the damage calculation when you when 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 they're when the the hits calculate uh, a big part of that calculation is your naval speed so whether or not you're going to take a hit um is based on how fast you are so if you make faster cruisers or destroyers they can actually be uh, hit less, and so they survive more. So the, it used to be they did recently, not recently, but like in the last year, they changed it um, so that the it's less exploitable. But there was a time when like the meta was just to build like really quick glass cannons, and you just couldn't hit them. Um, so yeah, this this would be good for for complementing such a build there, and then spotting spotting if you're trying to um, hunt things down or finding. Um, 
other fleets. You're trying to hunt down the fleets. Like we've seen earlier uh, with that naval battle, a big part of us waiting was actually just trying to get them actually into the battle. Um, <clears throat> so having spotting is, is very good. Spirit Tactician is positioning. So positioning uh, scales all of your stats. So this is a very good one to have for your main fleet. Uh, fleet penalty size is another thing. So you can actually have a bigger fleet. Um, this uh, also a, a, your fleet coordination um, um, and maneuver, sorry, your fleet maneuvering uh, also increases positioning. So like this and, and a high maneuvering stat can actually let you build bigger um, fleets or task force. So I, I was saying earlier, like you kind of want to keep it around 80, maybe 90, depending on your skill level. If you have a high maneuvering skill, you can kind of push that bigger and more ships equal more <laughs> things. Yeah. Uh, my division get nutrition. At least, yeah, it's, uh, you got to fix supply. You're getting attrition. You're, you're fixed. You got to fix supply. In unless you're fighting into mountains, the mountains, you'll get uh, attrition as well. Uh, and don't, don't train, don't train in low supply areas. So make sure you're training near like your capital and that. Um, yeah. So upgrade rail lines, infrastructure, if, 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 you know, cause it, it scales a little bit, but mostly your rail lines are what needs to be upgraded. Uh, and don't, don't fight in, in areas like if you're fighting, don't fight in the, in the Siberia night. Okay. All right, I'm going to go back to the Admiral traits. Sorry about the distraction there. Uh, visibility. Um, not 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 so much uh this would be good for your subs but not not your main fleet and then retreat decision chance for your escorts this is a good one to have uh main fleet i mean it, it i don't know i'm personally like a go for it kind of guy if, if we're gonna win we're gonna win if we're gonna lose we're gonna lose um yeah blockade runner the again retreat chance so like if you're uh doing convoy escort the escort's uh speed is really good um, so you blockade runner and then like maybe, um, visibility and then smoke screen that you might want to go for that. If you're doing escorts, minesweeper, the AI really doesn't build much mines. And I, I've yet to find a multiplayer community that lets you build mines yet. So I don't know. Mines are kind of pointless in between these laying, like, uh, laying efficiency. It's not really going to matter that much because you can only lay up to a thousand in a region. Um, and, and they lay pretty quick anyways. So like if you build a few mining things yeah i wouldn't worry too much about these either ones <clears throat> uh spotting spotting speed is good if especially if you have a spotting navy sometimes you can build a um a high detection sort of uh task force something that a lot of people recommend doing and then you you know having a good spotter on on top of that is good air traffic controller uh sortie efficiency of course and uh targeting from carriers so th this is actually very good for uh so um efficiency is the main part of that scales air stats. So in, in, in we, we've seen like in air combat, when you have, uh, uh, when you're ongoing missions, uh, this here is your average, uh, air mission efficiency. That's very low. You want this at a hundred. I, in an ideal situation, you want this at a hundred. Uh, I have no fuel and I have, you know, everything is really bad right now, but trust me, if it was good, it would be a hundred. So getting that extra 10% can be good because like there are things that happen like, um, weather, when you're in when you're in a, uh, a stormy weather sometimes um um you know that brings it down uh if you're overstacking a little bit you can it can bring it down uh just just a lot of things having extra efficiency is always good uh, again another sortie efficiency and then so between these two depending on what you built so if you built uh carriers if you built casts or if you built uh naval bombers i would say pick one between the two you should either do fighters or t torpedo bombers and uh the fighters are the only time that you'd want fighters is essentially if you're trying to fight out, I wish I could, yeah, like in the, the Pacific and you're not going to have a whole lot of range, air range. But otherwise, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan personally of doing torpedo bombers essentially all the time. Um, but, you know, having that extra um, uh, air supremacy on, on fighters, you know, there's, there's arguments, something, you know, to argue on the PDX forums or like, you know, I don't know, just somewhere else. <laughs> uh, that, that, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously sometimes mods change things, but yeah, personally, I like the, the, the torpedo bomber. And then, so like, if you were doing nav bombers, like we did in, in the last breakthrough, this would be the one to pick. And then of course, iron side. So capital armor. So if you have your main surface fleet, having extra armor is very good. And then just essentially all of these, these three you want to grab, except for, I mean, ground powder doesn't ma matter. Sorry. Sorry. These two. So, um, yeah, so a capital attack and then, uh, 
uh, chance to receive critical hit. So the, these kind of stack as well, because there's also uh, text that you can grab, which uh, uh, brings them down. So like this one here and then this one, it's good to grab these two by war. Obviously getting a third is even better. Um, and, you know, just helping, like just getting stat, uh, stats, more stats, right? Like complement the stats that you're building for. And then between these two, um, you know, it's going to be up to you. Do you want to do more uh, critical hits? Kind of my, my, my I, I thing, but, you know, maybe you, you're worried about them critting you. So <clears throat> it's kind of going to come down to like what kind of build and what kind of preference you have. Uh, this one here, this is completely pointless, ground pounder. Um, because there is a limit to shore bombardment, they really should make this a max uh, stat. So plus 25% max and not bonus. So uh, the way that it calculates is you get like half a point per like uh, light attack and you get a, a, a point per heavy attack, I think. Uh, there's some, some sort of equation, but essentially by the time you have like 20 ships, by the time you have 20 ships, it... it, it um, you get the full bonus anyways. And and essentially what this is, is when you have a fleet, and you have this fleet uh, out on um, next to the shore, and there's battles going on here, they will get um, they will get bonuses to... Or sorry, the, the enemy will get reduced stats because they're getting bombarded. Uh, yeah, that's what's happening. Uh, and then this 25% is... It gives you an extra 25% to that, but it's capped, so you, you hit the cap very early and it's, it's completely pointless. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mines are, mines are essentially for the achievement. Uh, it's some miners, it's, it's, it's okay to have them, uh, but it, it'll, get, it'll double your supremacy. Um, and they're okay in, in single player because it's like you don't actually need to invest a lot into mines to get like the bonuses. It's just that like, you know, it's not gonna be the, it's not gonna be the thing that end, helps or, you know, whatever. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the, the stats here. So cold water expert, attrition, I guess. Uh, you got some movement in you know, fjords and attacks. I mean, this, these are good, like, if you get them. But then again, it, it kind of comes down to, like, you're going to have, uh, like, when we unlock these, you're only going to have so many you can do. So, you know, it, it's just going to come down to, like, uh, you know, maybe you want to pick one of them and then, um, uh, you know, uh, try to fight in that area. But yeah, I mean, obviously 10% attack, movement, and defense, are these are great stats, uh, but, you know, terrain traits don't really happen that much, and then, yeah. And then, of course, uh, we have the officer roles, so depending on things that are locked, unlocked, you can get these um, bonuses. You tend not to use them in the military high command, because the military high command is going to be taken up by things that are probably going to be like your infantry expert. You know, if you're going to have this, maybe you're going to get, uh, like... Um, like a tank guy or an artillery guy, essentially you're going to fill these up with probably other things that are not Navy. Unless maybe you're doing the Navy build with, with Japan, but pretty rare that it's going to happen. Um, but obviously they give you certain things similar to the general state uh, uh, stats. You get certain bonuses like at level four here for your sub 10, 15, 20%. Again, like by the time you get to these level skill eight and all that, um, you, you've already won. You're either like the, the, the decisive battles happen sort of around 40 42, 43. Uh, but after that, like the, the Navy battle is going to swing in one way or the other and having an extra 10% stats is just kind of not going to matter that much. Um, and then, you know, chief of Navy, it, 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 uh, these essentially come down to like what your nation st uh, starts with. So, you know, yeah. Again, uh, construction feed for hubs. Yes. Okay. So, uh, if you're a minor power, uh, Snaz is talking about something here where, uh, Let's see here. What's a, what's a minor power? Maybe Hungary's got one. Uh, yeah, so if you're a minor power, you can do reorganize the uh, army uh, system, railway system. So you can hit this button, and then for the six months, is it? Uh, three, uh, 120 days, for the next 120 days, uh, constru uh, supply hub construction speed is plus 300%. So uh, that works in the same way that it, um, if you look at the cost, it's 20,000. Oh, it's so brutal. I I, I kind of wish they would change this just a little bit, bring it down a little bit. But instead of being 20,000 IC, it ends up being like 6,000 because you build it three times quicker. Um, you know, yeah. Uh, obviously, if you if you already have uh, infrastructure in there, you can build it quicker. So like infrastructure would make it, make it a bit quicker and um, 
what else would break it quicker? Like if you have more tech, bring it bring it up. Um, but yeah, it, it, they're expensive, and you know you 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 kind of want to build them all at once and just do like and use them sparingly. So you only use them when you need to use them. Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, and another thing that I guess I. I uh, you guys might not know this, but so if you see here, like this state here, uh, this state here has resources. See how I'm getting supply routes plus uh, 1.2? Well, this one here actually doesn't have one. So see how it's actually, uh, there is no 1.2 there. But if I go, uh, I'm just going to do instant construction to build it uh, instantly. Okay, so they're built, it's built. And then now, oh, actually I actually have to hook it up. Sorry. Uh, you gotta you gotta hook it up to the rail line, but once it's hooked up, and let it convert. All right, it's converted now, and then we look. Dun, 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 dun. So yeah, we got an extra uh, because we did the infrastructure as well, you know, and the one point two, we get some some extra, you know, uh, resources there. So that's a little tip for Hungary if you play Hungary in multiplayer, you know, uh, it's one of the <laughs> one countries that you actually need it for. But I think Bulgaria has another one too, but. Um, yeah, anyways. Okay, so that is uh, essentially all I wanted to talk about. That's what I wrote down for my list. We got, we went through the non-aggression packs, the docking rights, automatic split off. We talked about the admiral traits, uh, targeting majors, and co carrier overstacking. I'm going to do a little bit of investigating into that, and there probably will be a video. It'll be one of the Navy videos that we put out. Uh, if you guys don't know who I am, I'm Pigeon. You're watching my Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial channel. I have a lot of other videos that are much shorter than this, much more concise. If you manage to stick through all of these, uh, congratulations. Um, if you if if you are if you just discovered this and you're going to go back and watch these other ones, if you have any interesting time time timestamps that you 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 seen something that you liked, feel free to comment that in the the comments. I am going to try to at some point put in chapters. Um, but uh like the, these are very long videos so i have to kind of watch watch them all <laughs> yeah um but yeah a, i'm gonna give you guys a, a link to the discord and i will let you go but i just wanted to say thank you very much uh, let's copy this uh sorry let's let's uh here you go if you guys you guys managed to last this long. Check out the Discord. Um, yeah, if there's any more questions before I go, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, happy to uh, answer. <laughs> um, yeah, your Australian Navy build was all Naval High Command. Yeah, I mean, it, that's that's kind of what you want to do. If you're going to stack Navy, do a Navy build. I mean, Australia is just a dumb dumb country to play for Navy in, in MP. It's, that, that's a bit of a, me a meme, I bet. It's an OS or no? It's OST. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you start off with uh, two dockyards. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go get Gregnet. I think you have to watch the Luxembourg video for that. We answered that right, or w whatever the Q and A one was. We 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 talked about that previously. It's definitely a Hearts of Iron Four meta right now. Sub threes. Okay, sub threes would be pretty good, handy actually. Yeah, that would that would that would wreck uh, Japan's day for supply. Having if you started building sub threes in thirty seven, mm. and not only that, but you could um, you could um, license them too, right? Uh, yeah, getting the like a good destroyer out and an AWS. I'm surprised more UK players don't build an AWS and force all the miners to put a couple of dockyards on them. What is better in your opinion uh, between what their snaz? Um, I'm surprised that more UK players don't force the miners to build at AWS. Historical Germany? Uh -huh. I, or Kaiser? To play in the game? Mm, that's interesting. Uh, what did I do recently? The the Germany paths are kind of fun. Uh, the historical one obviously build up very quickly, but if you do... It looks like it's a little too late for that because it's... Yeah, so it's only showing the historical path right now. Um, and I can't actually do that without it, but I really like doing the, um, it's one of the Kaiser paths. I'm trying to remember now. Uh, yeah, like the HRE ones are pretty good. 
the all, Germany alt history is pretty fun. Another thing you can do as Germany is you can actually have their historical path, their historical um, focus tree, but you can flip communist. So normally you're locked out uh, by this. So you can actually be communist Germany and, and do their historical stuff. It's, it's kind of funny. It's a bit of a meme, but um, yeah, it did. Japan lost all of its holdings when you did the subs helped. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the AI is off right now, so <laughs> it's a bit cursed in Spain, guys. Don't don't look at this like in any other game. I was just messing around. This is, you know, uh, Hoikbor is a, a bit of a sandbox too. So like you can you can open up the console with uh, tilde. This is what I was doing here earlier. So it's the uh, the the thing beside one. You may have to if you have an international keyboard and it's not like an English set keyboard. It might be like dollar sign. It might be uh, like the, your equivalent dollar sign. Um, you can kind of just Google what, what there are. There's a, diff a bunch of different symbols that it might be to open us. But you, when you open up console, you have the option to to like do tons of things, like change all all, all the stuff. Like, you know, oh, uh, you're struggling against France and you're like, uh, you know, playing with Germany and you're like, hey, I just, I just want France not to exist anymore. Congratulations, it doesn't, right? Um, you know, you can easily do stuff like that. Uh, so, and, and there's just a million console commands. Uh, the ones that I was using here is no CB, so no Cass's belly. It lets you do all diplomatic uh, options. Yes, man, will make it so that they accept it. Just be sure to like turn these off afterwards after you've done your thing. Uh, IC, this gives you instant, constru uh, instant construction. Uh, again, be sure to disable this after you've done it uh, because the, the AI uses it as well. Uh, another thing I used here was ALE. So this is all latest equipment. And you know, you just add blah, blah, blah. Um, you can also hit manpower, uh, which will give you manpower. And then essentially like there, there's other ones. So like, uh, you know, in, instant training, IT, or like I did the agency ones. So you can kind of just like hit uh, AG and then like tab. So if you, you know, if you wanna, you don't know what something is, you can, you can just kind of do things like that. Like, uh, um, I don't know, what would be another one? Um, Maybe there's like Intel ones, international markets, Intel network instant. So you can just hit, hit tab and it'll give you a list of like ones that you can do there. So yeah, if you want to go console, exactly. Uh, press the form button far left. Uh, want to go to the console, you go and press the deformed button on the far left. Form button. Oh yes. Yeah, so yeah, it's the weird, it's the weird one by the one and, and above the tab, if you mean on the keyboard. Yeah. And see, yes. Good combination. Yeah. PP. PP gives you political power. You need that for a lot of actions. Uh, XP, uh, WS for war support. So you can kind of add, like you need like 10 more war support. You can just add 10 more war support. Uh, you know, uh, oh, there's another one, uh, teleport. This one's pretty handy. So teleport's pretty, <laughs> so you have some units and uh, you know, like l let's say you're, you're, uh, you're at war with the UK. So I CB. So we're gonna go to war with the UK, and you're like, okay, like let's say, let's say, like the the game, you want the game to be over or something, right? You can just, uh, you can just teleport some units. If they land on, if they land on other ones, they'll they'll start a battle. Yeah, you know, like this is super. There's also um, occupation paint. Yeah, occupation paint, and then you can kind of just uh, click the tile, or if you hold control, you take all the whole state. So you know. It, when you're when you're starting out, like these things can kind of be, it, it's fine. Like if you just want to get to a point where you you just you have things over with. They're really not capped. <laughs> yeah, you can also like tag over and delete their units, right? We could go to like uh, it's England for the UK. Uh, every country has their own um, their own tag, and it's usually like the first three letters of their of their name. Um, let's see, we'll get a peace deal here in a second. I'll show you. All right, that should be it. Yeah. You know, uh, you may not have enough points because you didn't fight, but <laughs> whatever. Oh, you're waiting for a pan. I, this game is actually br uh, bricked right now because of we your, we're, maybe I can change to Japan. Roman exit. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think I don't know if I can actually get out of this. Okay, you can. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> uh, 
uh, I copied pretty much exactly what Dibber Seal did with uh, Costa Rica and it didn't work remotely. Every attack attrition, even in core territory. Mm. Um, do you have a save file? It, have a, uh, join our Discord and um, send me send me the save file. If it's under 50 megabytes, it'll it'll work uh, easily. Um, yeah, uh, we've also got a, a, a form. I could just get you to fill it out in Google Forms. Um, maybe we can go through it. If, if you want to join the Discord right now and send it to me. I hope it actually doesn't... Uh, yeah, we we could go through it and look at it. I don't I don't know. Actually, we we got some time for it. Yeah. Uh, that might actually take a little bit. I don't know if you want to do that. Just let me know. Um. Yeah, it's likely it's likely they have supply issues. If you're Costa Rica, you might be fighting into mountains and stuff, or in jungles. So jungles, you do lose, like you will get division and attrition because of jungles. Um, yeah. Your, your, your generals can also get um, sick, right? You know, teleport, occupation paint. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll go over it sometime if you just, we, we, I'm sure there's just some, a few minor issues that you're having. That might actually be something I'll, I'll record offline for you guys. But anyways, uh, thanks for sticking it out. Uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, I can't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> All right, guys, if you don't know who I am, Pigeon, Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial channel. I've also got a gaming channel. Uh, it's called Pigeon Plays. You guys can check out. Uh, Rails, say, yeah, the Rails, Rails might be really bad down there. We, I also stream on, on Twitch quite often. Uh, generally, pretty much hard, hearts are on four, and um, yeah. So uh, check check me out. Uh, also got the community Discord. If you guys leave comments, uh, I will prioritize these comments. I get an email for every comment I got on any video right now, like uh, still. So I, I still have that set up. So I'll get a notification if you guys do leave comments. Uh, and if I see it's on one of these videos here, I'll prioritize and try to get back to you in like a day or two. Um, yeah. Also, like pe other people in the comment sections uh, will probably answer uh, questions for you. Again, if you guys want to uh, uh, join the Discord, we, we do have a, a section for new player questions, and the community is very helpful. Um, you know, there's varying levels of skill uh, in, in our community, so, and a lot of people are, like, excited to help you learn. Um, yeah, and uh, I hope you I hope you continue on with uh, Hearts of Iron 4, and uh, yeah. All right, 